Hello and welcome everybody to this uh, special session where we're going to be showing the documentary Vision 2020 from Eyesight to Insight. And um, this, uh, this documentary is going to be available uh, to watch only during this weekend because it is the courtesy of their creators, Nathan Arpstenfeld and Barry Ockertel. And I thank them uh, for having the generosity to let us see um, this documentary for the community of visionaries. And um, I would like to know where you are watching from, because uh, we know that we have participants to our various activities from all over the world, but we always are curious to see where people are watching. And I would like to know if you need glasses or contacts. If you're here interested about natural vision improvement and think clearly again with your own eyes, the chances are that you've had some issue of some kind, and I'd be curious to know what it is and if you need glasses or contacts. Or maybe you have had in the past surgery or uh, you have been told that you need surgery. <clears throat> Either way, you're going to discover here alternatives and um, maybe the possibility to postpone or even to cancel and not need to have those surgeries. So this is interesting. And if we were together, uh, in a room, probably there would be a lot of hands up uh, to answer to these questions about needing glasses or contacts or having had a surgery or having been told that you need one. And uh, if I ask you if you know anyone that wears glasses or contacts or that has had or needs a surgery, probably by now everybody would have their hands up. So uh, vision problems are very common around the world. And uh, it's necessary that we know more about how to take care of our eyes and how to improve our eyesight naturally. And that's what this documentary is going to be all about, as well as an invitation that I'm going to make you, uh, a special surprise that I have. But I would like to invite you to share this with your family and friends, because chances are that they also have issues with their eyesight. Yes, so during this weekend only, Saturday, 30th of March, 2024, and Sunday, 31st of March, 2024, this documentary and the recording in the YouTube channel is going to be available. So if you haven't subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash clearsight method, this would be a great moment to do so, so that you can very easily find the documentary this weekend, access it, share it with friends, share it with family, but also we share free information about how to take care of your eyes and how to improve your eyesight naturally. So you want to be part of it and uh, to have the news, right? You can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com uh, slash clearsight method. Um, and the invitation I was telling you about, and this is something that you can do beyond this documentary that we're going to show for this weekend only, and that is, to join the free four-part masterclass, Wake Up Your Eyes. Uh -huh. For that, you need to register through the link clearsightmethod.com slash wakeupyoureyes. And when you register, you're going to be able to participate in a more or less two-week free four-part masterclass that we're going to start broadcasting from this Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday, on. Tomorrow, there's going to be a more in-depth presentation about this free four-part masterclass also in this YouTube channel and also in Facebook. So you want to be registered, uh, but uh, and subscribe and follow, following. But if you register, you will be sure um, to have all the information that you want to participate in this masterclass. And you may be wondering, uh, so who am I to be talking about all these things? Who is Ainoa de Federico? Well, that's my name. Um, I'm Dr. Ainoa de Federico. I have two PhDs and a honorary doctorate. I am a teacher or a professor and researcher at the University of Toulouse in France. And I'm the creator of the ClearSight Method, one, a method to learn how to see clearly again without glasses or surgery. So this is a page, uh, the, how, how it looks, the page at the university, my page, my research page. And um, yeah, I received a honorary doctorate last year mm -hmm, because of the research and the global impact of my ClearSight Method program uh, by a university in Mexico. Uh, and since then, I became the director <clears throat> of the only degree program uh, for the professionals 
of Natural Vision Improvement, the only university degree mm -hmm, in the International University of Human Development and Leadership in Mexico, again. So this is the page where you can find uh, the vision coaching degree. Um, it has, uh, it's the only official degree for natural vision improvement professionals that's recognized by the Secretary of Education in Mexico. Um, anyway, there's plenty of institutions in Mexico recognizing this diploma, this degree. Um, voila, and you can have a glance at uh, this International Center of Vision Coaching that we have created in, the, in this Mexican university, where we're not only doing initial training for vision coaches, uh, we're also doing professional uh, training so they can get clients and be successful in their practice. And we also carry uh, research and um, we also have uh, publications, scientific publications, events and conferences, awards, and a directory of professionals. So sorry, this is for now uh, happening mostly in Spanish, but there will be an English version of all of this soon. Um, anyway, and um, so this is just a few words about me. And uh, if you want to participate in uh, uh, the uh, pre four part masterclass after this, um, this documentary, let me show you the date when it's going to happen. So I'm going to remove myself so you can take a snapshot, a quick snapshot to take all the dates. Uh -huh, and this will be the times when it's going to be happening. Yes. So this is for uh, what you can uh, do after this weekend where this documentary is going to be um, visible. Yeah. And let me see, because there's a number of comments already. So there's Cynthia from Philadelphia saying, I use glasses. Roberto also is using glasses. We have people from New Jersey, Aha Marcia that uh, wears glasses too. Antonio from Cal Calgary that also uses glasses. Alonso from Washington DC, okay. Uh, Uzi from the Netherlands that unfortunately wears glasses. We have Yini from England. Uh -huh. JC from uh, London that has problems with the cornea. Okay, well, um, what you're going to be hearing about and learning if you join the free four-part masterclass is going to help you with your cornea and also with the cataracts. Um, so we have Apple from San Francisco, California, Alonso that has had dry eyes. Okay, well, that's something that you can solve also naturally. Uh, Sheena from Wales. Uh -huh. uh, hello, Ayano. Uh, we don't know... Uh, uh, where you're from, that's okay. We also have Gabriela from Bucharest, uh, Romania. Uh, we have Kathleen uh, and Guy Segan from Ottawa. Alison Cohen. Hey, Alison, nice to see you. She's a participant of the ClearSight Method Advanced Program. Nice to see you, Alison, from London. Andrew from Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. Hitendra is saying um, that you have blurry vision now and then, so you may find a solution here. So stick around and uh, you'll see options and alternatives. Okay. We also have more people from the States. Alonso, she's okay. So I guess you're a Spanish speaker. Uh, we have Ioannis uh, Ticanis from Den Haag, uh, Soraya from Canada. Ah, okay. Alonso is from Guadalajara, Mexico, of course. And uh, Maria Luisa, okay, is from Guadalajara. We have Sheena that has floaters and, wear, and wears glasses. Well, you may be finding solutions for those floaters. Uh, okay, uh, for somebody who's asking for, um, for the dates, let me show them again a little bit, but I'll show them a uh, longer bit later. Uh, we have uh, Red Love from California. Wendy, okay. Wendy of Vermeij from the Netherlands wears glasses since she was 12 years old and you cannot have surgery because of herpes keratitis on the left eye. Well, the good news is that with natural vision improvement, you not only you can avoid probably most likely the glasses, but it's likely that the keratitis goes away as well. Uh -huh. So stick around because this is very valuable information for you. We have Michael uh, Milke from Texas. Alexandra Hewitt, so nice to say hi to you from Kenya. 
gardening in the UK now, listening to Nathan Oxenfeld for podcast. Yeah, it's one of the creators of this uh, documentary that we're going to show. And I believe you're also a participant of the ClearSight method. Okay, we have Dory from Belize, nearsighted cataract, cataract surgery, retina tears, astigmatism. You have quite a combo there. And the good news is that you can learn uh, with natural vision improvement what you're going to learn in the documentary and in the free four part masterclass that will follow you. Uh, it, there's the possibility for you to get rid of all these symptoms. I've had participants that have. So if it was possible for them, why wouldn't it be possible for you? And we have Andrew that wears glasses as bloaters, struggle with blepharospasms. All of that can go away. And Michael Reynolds, hi, nice to see you. Uh, okay. Okay, so and there's more and more people saying hi from different places. Margarita, hello. Uh, oh, Nathan, so nice to have you here. Nathan Oxenfeld, one of the creators of the documentary together with Barry Oppertel. Uh, and um, he's so excited for people to watch uh, the film. Absolutely. You've put a lot of work into it. Absolutely. And it has already helped people improve the vision just by watching the movie. That's absolutely true. And let me invite you to do that. Observe if by opening your mind, in, um, to the ideas that are going to be shared in the documentary, just opening your, your mind to those possibilities, your eyesight improves. It happens to a lot of people. Also during the documentary, there's going to be a number of practices suggested, some that you can practice during the documentary and some that you can introduce into your daily life. And you'll see how they have a positive impact in your eyesight. Yeah, so I'm so happy that you're popping in, Nathan, to say hi. I know you've been having some uh, health issues. Uh, usually you uh, come uh, to share the stage with me when we share the, the, the documentary, which is something that happens once a year or so in this uh, community, thanks to your generosity and Barry Ockertels. And uh, I'm happy that at least you, you could pop up to say hi. And uh, we have also... Makit, well, I don't know your name exactly, but you said your daughter is seven and farsighted, and this works for children too. It works for children, and it works for older people. It works at all ages. I improved my eyesight as early as being six months old, and uh, we've had participants um, of uh, who are various activities that are in their 60s, their 70s, their 80s, their 90s, and they all can improve their eyesight. Mm -hmm. So um, watch very carefully, pay attention, take all those ideas. I invite you to have a, a notebook, maybe. Um, you may um, also want to watch the documentary, if possible, without glasses or contacts and see what happens, or maybe with pinhole glasses. I was wondering if I had some around here, but it's not the case. But in any case, you may want to take some notes, and I invite you also to have water, to be a hydrated while you watch the documentary. And I would like to invite you to remove distractions from uh, notifications, from phones uh, or other apps. Uh, yeah. And if you are with people around at home, well, you can either ask them, invite them to watch the documentary with you or uh, ask them to let you have your full time so that you can fully enjoy uh, the screening and uh, take the best out of it. Okay, and without uh, more introductions, then let me, uh, let me, oops, not this, uh, let me share the documentary. So enjoy the watching. I'll stick around for Q&A after the documentary. And if Nathan has the possibility uh, to jump in, I would love that. Uh, if not, well, it will be just me. But now enjoy and share with friends and family as much as possible. Have you ever wondered why so many people wear spectacles? Why is it that the average person's eyes get worse and worse with each passing year? Why do we need to get stronger and stronger lenses in order to have good vision? This documentary will share the stories of how people all over the world are improving not only their physical vision, but the way they see life.
Our story starts on the Gold Coast of Australia. Barry Orcatel is a vision educator who has been helping people improve their vision using natural means for more than 30 years. My journey started when I was 32 and I was wearing these thick Coke bottle glasses with minus 4.75 prescription for seeing, plus I needed about a plus two for reading and there was astigmatism as well. And I was told when I was 32 that I had an eyesight of someone in their 40s. And I started experimenting with some of the exercises and after two months, I managed to get back into single lenses. And I've never needed glasses for reading again in the last 20 years. Four months later, I passed a driver's license with 2020 vision. I can remember the first time I actually went the whole day without wearing my glasses. It was so exciting. Two weeks later, they found a pituitary tumour sitting on my optic nerve. And they told me, you shouldn't be able to see that. And I said, but I've been doing these exercises and things like that. And so there's been a journey for me, not only in terms of my physical eyesight, but in terms of my life. As I sort of got further and further into improving my own eyesight, other people kept asking me, how do you do this? How do you do this? And, and so I started running vision classes locally and then interstate and then internationally. And I ended up doing a master's of education, specifically looking at the effect computers have on eyesight and what we can do about it. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, Nathan Oxenfeld, also a vision educator like Barry, is surprised at how little natural eye improvement is being used by the public. When I first heard that you could improve your vision naturally, I thought it was a little too good to be true because I had already been wearing glasses and contacts every day for over a decade for my myopia or nearsightedness and astigmatism. I found a book called Perfect Sight Without Glasses that was published 100 years ago in 1920, which is what led me to work with my vision teacher Dr. Jerry Ann Tabor. And once I improved my own eyes, I wanted to help as many other people as I could to improve theirs. So I actually went through Dr. Tabor's teacher training program to become a certified vision educator. I published a book called Give Up Your Glasses for Good, began a YouTube channel, and started a podcast, and led workshops, classes, and retreats all around the world. And it was at one of these conferences where I met Barry Ocatel from Australia. And we both felt like there was just so much more that could be done in this field. I'm off to America to see Nathan again. What Nathan and I are going to be doing is catching up with all the vision educators in America and in Europe and to get to see from them what we can do about improving our own physical eyesight. Hi, I'm Claudia Mühlenweg and I'm a vision educator from Los Angeles. So my name is Pasha Roberto Kaplan and I'm a vision educator optometrist, former optometrist. I now live in Germany. I'm from South Africa. Nathan and Barry are interviewing some of the top vision educators in the world. These people have dedicated their lives to improving the vision of others and have developed a wealth of knowledge which we will be tapping into. The field is growing as more and more people search for ways to improve their eyesight. So I had heard of Bates in school and, and we were lectured very strongly about not even paying any attention to it because it was not scientific and incorrect. Uh, but maybe 10 years after I graduated uh, school, I happened to run into a, uh, a, a book on Bates. And at the time I was involved in Tai Chi and uh, yoga and meditation. And as I kind of thumbed through the book, I, I uh, said, well, this is like Tai Chi and this is like yoga and I'm an optometrist and I'm myopic. Uh, let me try an experiment to see if it works. And that was how I uh, started. I was born with cataracts. It's very, very unusual. Uh, there are many people with cataracts. I would say that something like 75% of the people at the age of 80 either already had cataracts or having cataracts. But only one out of 20,000 infants are ever born with it. There was a working theory in my time that you remove parts of the lens rather than the whole lens. And 
99% of my lens is scar tissue. This is a normal lens, mm -hmm. and this is mine after five cataract surgeries. Wow. So 99% of my lens is scar tissue. I was able to build up enough vision with which I can read, write, and drive. And I blew up my driver's license, so everybody can see it. I don't care about privacy. I don't have it anyway. Uh, I was wearing glasses for 20, 20 something years, and I, I had myopia. And I didn't have a clue that you could improve your eyesight in another way. So glasses were for me the way to see clearly. And then I met Amelia Salvador and I did uh, several sessions with her. She taught me the Bates method and I practiced and I noticed that I, I was improving. I was legally blind without glasses. Without glasses, I couldn't see the big E on the eye chart. But now, I'll be 64 this year, I can see up close everything I need to, and I can pass a driving test without glasses. So I am glasses free 99% of my waking life. I do have a very slight prescription for glasses for driving at night. And I started wearing glasses in third grade. My personal experience is that I was very short-sighted from age six to age 30, then read a book of a scholar of William Bates, which I by accident found. The work with the book was not very successful, but I took it with me on a journey in Asia, Sri Lanka. And there I couldn't wear my contact lenses anymore. And I remember to a sentence in this uh, book, under good circumstances, the visual energy could grow from itself. So I took away my glasses, made the whole journey about four months in Sri Lanka and Nepal without glasses. And after that, I two years needed no glasses at all. I had trouble seeing at school and squinting to see the television type of thing. My parents noticed and sent me to an optometrist. I came home with a pair of glasses. Typical, right? Story that so many people have. And I went to school with the glasses and found that, one, I got teased. I got asked questions. They were uncomfortable. I found that behind this barrier, I felt like I was no longer part of the world, no longer a participant, but more like an observer hidden behind this weird thing on, front of my, on the top of my nose. So that's what I couldn't get used to. And it was such mild myopia that the glasses really only made a small difference. I figured I could do without. So after a few weeks of trying to get comfortable with them, I just went, forget it. I tossed them. <laughs> and uh, I think I told my parents I lost them. <laughs> I was still living with my parents at the time. They weren't too impressed. They just paid for them. And of course, I ended up squinting through life because I had slightly blurry vision, didn't know what to do about it other than if I did this, I saw a little better. So that's what I ended up doing. And it worked for 16 years. I had what's called a convergent squint. My right eye was going in and I was farsighted. And I hated my glasses. They made me miserable. I got bullied and teased. And just my whole life made me even more shy so once I got older, I actually found this book on vision improvement and I started doing some of the techniques and I saw improvements, but then I forgot all about it. And then at the end of my marriage, when that fell apart and I actually went through a really horrible divorce, my vision just tanked. It got really, really bad. And I remember one particular day where I was driving and I got lost in a sketchy part of town. And I, back in the day, there was no Google Maps, right? So I had to pull up this old, uh, it's called the Thomas Guide in LA. It's teeny print. And even with my glasses, I, everything was blurry. I couldn't see anything, I took them off. Like, so I really, I panicked. I thought if I lose my vision, if it's getting worse and worse and at that speed, I'm gonna lose my job. I was a designer back then. So, you know, yeah, you, you can't work as a designer when you can't see. So I remember that book and I pulled it out. But the biggest epiphany I really had was that it wasn't just good vision habits and vision practices, but that the emotional component, like I was sleep deprived, I was stressed out all the time. I was lonely and I didn't like, you know, where I was at. I didn't feel connected to people, like the glasses were this barrier. So I realized then that it's way bigger than just 
what they, you know, eye exercises. And your brain is flexible, your visual system is flexible, your auditory system also is flexible, and there is a rigid concept that people have that things cannot be changed. And so this is a very important thing for us to know that first of all, vision can improve, but also things in life can change. And most people don't believe that that's the case. I had a chance to participate in the training course for vision teachers. And I became a teacher and then I became enrolled in this. And yeah, I'm passionate about it. At the beginning, I was like afraid of having people with huge problems like pathologies or something like that. But in the end, I have learned that everybody can benefit from this. Everybody can have improvement. This is real benefit, not only for the eyes, but also for the mind, for the body, for the way you live, the way you see the world and even children. I love to work with children too. Wearing glasses is that you are not seeing the real world. The world uh, is, uh, is made to be seen without glasses. And you can have a different point of view. And it depends on you. It depends on how you feel and how you are in every moment. There was one 52-year-old man who was uh, farsighted and presbyopic, which is uh, having to use reading glasses after the age of 40 or 45. Uh, and he said, I hate glasses and that's why I'm here. And I thought, gee, I, I wonder what could help him special. So I came up with uh, um, an aspect of vision, uh, and I wondered if I manipulated it in some way, made it, triggered it in some way, whether it would actually improve his ability to read uh, without glasses. And, uh, and, uh, and if, it, if it improved uh, him doing it during the exercise, maybe it would carry over so he wouldn't have to wear glasses. And, uh, and so I made a uh, particular eye exercise uh, chart for him and taught it to him. And he came back the next week and I was excited to see what uh, he would say. And he, he said, I said, how's it going? He said, I'd like five more charts. I said, why? Thinking he wanted one for his wife. And I said, why? He said, I want, I love the exercise. Not everybody has an easy time with it, but he, he said, it makes my eyes feel strong. Uh, it, um, I, they feel better. Uh, I want to do it all the time, every time I have a chance. And he said, I want uh, a chart for the kitchen, and I want one for the TV room, for the bedroom, for the bathroom, one at work where I can d do it during the day. And uh, so the next week he came and I said, uh, how's it going? He said, for three days, so 11 days after he started, uh, I don't have to wear glasses for reading. I read all day long at work. I can see without my distance glasses perfectly. And he went from uh, at 2050 to start with, and now he could see 2025. It's good enough to read the phone book and to read the small print in the newspaper. So he was really happy, and I was totally amazed that in 11 days he could turn around uh, his, his situation. Three years later, he came to my office, and he saw even better. He saw 2020 and, and near 2025. I um, met Ray Gottlieb in 1979 and he introduced me to the Bates uh, process and at that point I was a professor of optometry at Pacific University and in Oregon and v natural vision improvement was not something I'd ever considered. I was, my specialty is vision therapy, optometric vision therapy, but with his uh, introduction to what he did for his own myopia and also meeting Jakob Lieberman uh, who also had success with his astigmatism and his myopia. Uh, when my pa patients came into the clinic and said, can you help me see better? I thought, well, why not try it? And so I launched a number of studies. The most important thing about the studies was that eyesight improvement could occur in three weeks, statistically significant results. And that's published in my book, Seeing Without Glasses. Well, I was skeptical because somewhere in that 16 years of my blurry vision, I tried eye exercises and I tried them for several weeks every day, really religiously went and did them. Didn't work at all. And I thought I was doing the Bates method, um, but it had absolutely no result. It was boring and tedious. And so I gave up and I became one of the many skeptics that said, Bates method doesn't work. Eyesight improvement doesn't work. Until eight years later, I came across a different book and that book had a different concept. It wasn't about eye exercises. It was about relaxing your eyes. How do you use your eyes all day long? And that made a big difference. Once I grasped that concept and started using it, 
Within two weeks, I was back to 2020 vision. I wore glasses for 10 years, and within six months, I was seeing clearly. I remember be, being in the mountains with my family, camping, being in a swimming pool, looking around, and all of a sudden I looked and went, oh my gosh, I'm seeing everything clear. And um, I've been doing it for 47 years and still seeing clearly. I was highly myopic as a child, starting in second grade and discovered vision improvement in my 20s and took some classes and had a really good time, learned a lot. And then 15 years later, I developed an eye disease, which necessitated surgeries. And I had some vision shifting and some vision loss with surgeries. So after that, I discovered, I rediscovered vision improvement because I wanted to recapture my vision after uh, my procedures. And I successfully transformed my vision from 2400 to 2100 using uh, natural vision improvement techniques. I wore glasses uh, when I was 13 for nearsightedness. And then um, the glasses gradually got stronger. And then when I was studying to be an orthoptist at Moorfields in London, I wanted the strongest possible contacts and it was actually a bit much seeing 2010 I realized. So that was an interesting experience. Then I came to the US and I studied yoga and I stopped wearing contacts and I met a Bates teacher and he taught me how to get out of my glasses and then I started teaching it. And I just want to tell you my first student was a boy of nine and he came in because he'd failed the vision test at school. And he was seeing 2040, poor 2040. And so I sent him away with some activities. And in two weeks, he came back and he was seeing 2020, a really good 2020. And I was so encouraged. It got me turned from the orthoptics and ortho way of looking at vision or allopathic way to, oh yes, this is possible for more people than just me. The Bates Method is a, a form of vision training or vision therapy that was developed by an ophthalmologist about 100 years ago now. He lived from 1860 to 1931, Dr. William Bates. He was based in New York City and he started off just as like a conventional eye doctor prescribing glasses and performing surgeries. But he was really one of the first people to really question glasses as being like the best solution. He really wondered, he saw that what I saw, which was that he would prescribe glasses to people and then they would come back and need stronger and stronger glasses over time. And that got him scratching his head wondering, is this really the best way to treat vision problems? It seems to actually be making them worse over time. When my dad was an accountant and he said, what do, what do optometrists do? And I said, well, you know, you, we come in, we examine your eyes, we give you prescriptions for glasses or contacts, we check for eye disease, and then the people thank us and pay us. And I go, he goes, okay. Then they come back a year or two later, and what happens in over 75% of the cases? They come back a year or two later, and we examine them and check, and then they need stronger glasses. So he goes, let me get this straight. You give them something, and they thank you and pay you. I go, yes. And they come back. I go, yes. And they thank you and pay you again. I go, yes. He goes, you mean you give them something and it gets worse and they come back? I go, yes. He goes, this is a very good profession. The optometric profession right now stopped calling it myopia control. They call it myopia management. Why? Because myopia control failed. They don't have a solution. They are working with axial length. They are working with flattening the cornea. And they're working with drops, three primary approaches. We manage myopia. Neuroscience has demonstrated the neuroplasticity of the brain, and eyes are part of the brain. That's the thing, the problem with current, like, traditional eye care. They only look at the eyeball as if it's, like, this thing that you can take out of, you know, I can take it out of my eye, and they can observe it, and that's it. But the reality is that um, we are driven by the nervous system, so the brain is really in charge of muscle tension, of coordination, and so any vision problems 
can be completely changed. Like you, like you can change your brain, your eyes can be changed. Embryologically, physiologically, and neurologically, the eye is brain tissue. In multiple personality disorders, all the different personalities had different prescriptions. So when you improve your vision, you're working on your mind-body connection. It has uh, effects on your posture, it has effects on your attitudes and belief systems in the world, and your personality. So I feel that vision therapy is one of the most powerful modalities to help change who you are, how you are, and how you see the world. The eye is only the printer of our inner perceptions. And so you don't focus on the printer when you're working with your computer. You focus on the software, and the perceptions are the software. And so my wish for people is to first recognize that the eye is only a light receiver and a transmitter, and that we see through the eye. And therefore, if there's an eye problem, we first work with perceptions. And later, the eye catches up and prints out exactly what the new perceptions are. Dr. William Bates put forth this notion that nearly all vision problems are caused by strain. Not only physical strain, but mental strain. And the opposite of strain happens to be relaxation. So nearly everything in the Bates method, if not everything in the Bates method, is built on this platform that relaxed eyes are normal eyes and they see better than strained eyes as well as strained minds. So it's a, it's a system of relaxation is the simplest way you can think about it. Only relaxed eyes really see clear. And without relaxation you may try hard and it more you try hard making exercises, the worse it gets. For example, if you are reading and you don't see properly, breathe and close your eyes. Close your eyes is really effective. And then breathe and then open them again. It's like reset your focus. Don't start trying to focus because then you are going to interfere. You are going to interfere with tension. Close your eyes, breathe and open again. Give your eyes another chance to, to do it better. If we're nervous, stressed, tight, our body and muscles tighten up. And because of the limitation of blood flow, energy, chi to our body, it also limits the flow of energy to our eyes and brain. And everything can become tight. And if we stay in this chronic state of tightness and stress, the whole visual system can become more constricted those magic eye picture books that I do, for you to be able to just let your eyes gaze effortlessly at it, then all of a sudden a hidden, hidden image comes out. Letting the images come to you and not you going to the image. A violinist that I worked with, she was, you know, doing the activities and her vision was gradually getting better. She's very auditory and Bates said, if you relax one of the senses, they all relax. And I thought that was an outrageous statement when I read it, actually. And I said, okay, well, let's, let's try this. I said, can you remember A, the note A? Since, you know, as a violinist, they, we all tune to them. And she said, yeah. I said, okay, so see if you can remember A and look at the print. She was presbyopic. And she, she, she took a minute and I said, well, you might need to blink, you know. And she went, and it was super clear. And she got it and she read all the way down to the tiny print. And she was flabbergasted and I was thrilled. And I said, okay, so practice that. And then you'll get used to the fact that you can read it. And then the doubt will go away and you'll just relax. Because really it was clear, you know, when we get the experience, of seeing perfectly clearly, we start to trust that we can. Because a lot of us are afraid we're not gonna see something. And what we need to do is trust that we will. And then we relax and we do. Sit in front of an eye chart at a distance where most of it is clear and start thinking of anything that tenses you, bills that need to be paid, an argument you've had, and look at that chart and say, hmm, 
hmm, a little less clear. And then start thinking about, oh, my next vacation or you know, something happy, something joyful, a baby's face. And you'll see the chart clears up because your thoughts are happy. Getting the I and my connection going again. And that's what the Bates method is all about. A very, very simple thing to do. Remove their glasses, check their eyesight, sit down and have a friendly conversation over a cup of tea for 20 minutes or so, and then recheck their eyesight on the same or a different chart. Routinely, you will see perhaps a two to three line improvement in less than 30 minutes. I've learned that I'm teaching or helping people to relax. So you're gonna rub your hands and then you're gonna cup them like you've got some eggs and you're gonna place them, the palms of your hands over your closed eyes like this. Only for about a, less than a minute we're gonna do. And then when you're finished, I'm gonna get you to drop your hands and with your two fingers, just touch the corners of your eyes, lay your hands to drop and then open your eyes again. All right, it's gonna be that simple. If I'm going to say, have you improved your eyes, you need to know what your eyes are. So have a look around, have a look up something close, see if there is a difference in something. Okay, so let's all do this now. Let's rub our hands. And let's cup our hands as if we've got two eggs in them and we're going to place them over our eyes. And we're just going to breathe for a moment. And I just want you to be aware, is it hot or cold? Is it tingly? Do you see all black or do you see colours or do you see shapes? Whatever it is, just bring your awareness to it. And I also want you to bring your awareness to how you're feeling right now. And just let yourself relax just a little bit more. Maybe even drop your shoulders a little bit if you can. <sighs> and then very slowly, just allow your hands to drop. And then very gently, just open your eyes and have a look around. And I'll just have a show of hands if anyone's noticed any difference in that one minute exercise. We've got, have a look around the room, the hands up in the room. There are probably over 50% of people have had a shift in one minute. It's not bad, is it? When you wear glasses, your eyes get worse. They never get better. They don't improve. They always seem to need to have the next stronger pair, the next stronger pair, and you don't even have to tell people that. They know it. And so the glasses really create more of a problem, and typically, People that use glasses find that within a year or so, a year or two, they will need slightly stronger glasses. And that keeps going in that same fashion, worse, worse, worse vision over time. And that's a shame because it could be turned around by not using the glasses. Glasses are a tool. They may help you, but you pay, or you always pay for that help. By using glasses, you always go into a pattern of tension, and that pattern stays, never changes. The glasses are like something that frees a situation, and a situation of tension that can only uh, get more and more. If they are not necessary, then it's much better not to use them, or to use reduced lenses. When you experience blurry vision, it's like your system or your body is sending you a signal saying, hey, something's wrong. You're not seeing correctly. And when you put glasses on, you're essentially sending the signal back like, hey, shut up. There's no problem, I can see again. And so you've ignored the, the original root cause of the issue. I um, mean, they are prescription glasses, so it is a, a prescription that becomes very addictive and very habit forming. And I've met so many people who their vision Right when they start to use the glasses, their vision immediately gets even worse when they take them off, and then they are hooked on the glasses. And so they're really a crutch that prevents us from looking on these deeper levels of, of what is actually causing the problem in the first place. There is an upside to glasses. It's an instant fix. 
but there's so many downsides to it. It does not address the underlying cause of the problem. We need to really examine this point about 2020. And, and we are so conditioned that 2020 eyesight is the ultimate perfect vision. Mm. It's great for eyesight and it has advantages in our living. But it's so fear-based mm. that people must really look at their fear behind this legislated rule that everybody has to see 2020. And when we do that, uh, we're going to find this incredible dynamic mobility and flow of this fluctuating seeing. What I love to teach people is that their vision is flexible and it can change. I generally check vision um, acuity on the chart when we start. And then we go about and do vision techniques. And then I generally check their vision after. And most people are standing further back from the eye chart with a comfortable reading at the end of class. It's beautiful to see the joy and the expressions on their face that our vision is flexible and it can change. Sometimes you hear you just ditch your glasses, right? That's that's unrealistic for a lot of people because if your vision is so um, blurry that you know your clarity is right here so using transitional glasses weaker glasses and only use what strength you need diopters are measurement in terms of meters and focal points so any diopter can only correct you for one distance if you wear glasses for for nearsightedness because for driving for instance which is like, you know, 20 feet, six meters, your computer is two feet or 60 centimeters away from you. You don't need the same strength. So really getting the, the only use whatever strength you need just to have enough clarity, enough clarity for a given task, not seeing the street signs five blocks over, right? That might not be important for if you cook a meal, let's say. It seems silly, but to make friends with blurry is a good point because you are not fighting against blurry because when you remove glasses for the first time you think you are not going to see clearly ever but if you, if you wait for a while and you start relaxing and feeling that that is your own being your own sight then it starts um, the tension starts to release and then everything gets clearer it helps to be creative and, and introspective and uh, experimental and to treat things as an experiment so that whatever happens because of the experiment uh, isn't wrong, it's the answer to the experiment. So tune in and especially take your glasses off and notice when is my vision best and when is it worst. So you discover patterns, could be the time of the day, could be your emotional state, could be how stressed you are, how much sleep you got, but just detecting those things. So I like to call that like in a journal, the strains and the gains, right? So you kind of have both sides because then you kind of have a better idea what is the way for you to, to improve. A woman came to my workshop and she walked in and was reluctant to even give up her glasses, to not even put them on the side of the room. And she had such a major shift in that one class that she came to me for several sessions. And within several sessions, she left wearing glasses prescription that was probably about eight years old. It was two prescriptions prior, and she has never gone back up to her stronger pres prescriptions. And the weaker lenses as a stepping stone create a dance, a balance of returning between this heavy thinking state, feeling state, and remembering I'm a human being. For me, glasses stop people from seeing their own power from seeing their own wonder and their own gifts. The problem with glasses is that we get stuck in them. Wearing glasses for short periods of time, like dentists to look at my teeth, or looking through a telescope at, at Mars, that's fine. Those are lenses used in a really good way. Or if we're going through a stressful period, like a kid going to a new school, high school for instance, I had this one kid, and um, she just, you know, everything was very overwhelming. So she just wore them for short periods of time and then she'd take them off and do the activities. And after a year, she didn't need them anymore. She was habituated, she was okay. And if we break a leg, we need crutches. 
and then we expect to do physical therapy and get out of them. But sometimes you wear glasses because you put them on in the morning and then you don't remove them. First time I saw her, uh, she told me, okay, remove your glasses and let's see what you can see. And I said, without my glasses, I can't see anything. And she said, anything? So you don't see me? <laughs> said, oh, yes, I can see you, of course. Then, why did you talk like that? And changing the way you talk, the way you, your mind, and also do a list of all the things you can do without glasses. And that list keeps on growing. Yeah, nobody needs uh, glasses to talk on the phone. Mm -mm. But everybody gets them on. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, like shoes, they may need two or three pairs of glasses. One pair of glasses that reduces that bad stress. Another pair that says, look, I just got a job to do right now. I've got to drive 50 miles. Look, I'll wear these glasses for that. But to be flexible like shoes. Lots of people ask me how they can use reduced prescription glasses. So I recommend ordering several different pairs of glass prescription glasses that are less than the current prescription. Is this a minus two day or minus four day? Oh, I'm going to walk the dog in the forest, minus two day. <laughs> and then, oh, I have to drive to the city, or oh, minus six day. And play a musical instrument, oh, that's minus four day. So he chooses his lifestyle by the right glasses for the job for that day. I personally wear indoor glasses that allows me to see my books, my recipes, the newspaper, and that's really comfortable. And when I go on the computer, I have a slightly stronger pair that allows me to see comfortably within a certain distance. And then when I drive, I have distance glasses for comfort and safety. And I'm not in favor of people saying, throw away your glasses. I think that they are basically deepening an emotional suppression, facing that, that much unclearness. And I've worked with people who, who are minus 10 and didn't wear their glasses for 10 years and their life actually was affected. Mm -hmm. And when they went to minus five, they somehow returned to a centered position and they could do their work and their training much better. So for me, it's still the experiment. I want to see how far I can go, how old I can be and still not need reading glasses. How many people here wear glasses? There's still a lot, isn't there? And so, the question I would ask you is, what is it in life that you're not looking at? And the two are actually connected. The most important thing that Dr. Bates taught in my eyes is something called central fixation. And this is less of a practice and it's more of a habit or a different way to use your eyes or look at the world. So I want you, if you had to show me where your peripheral vision is with your hands, where would your hands go? And then if I were to ask you where your central vision is, where would maybe your, your hands go then? Yeah, so we've got three different things. We've got one finger, we've got kind of a, a narrow area, and then a little bit wider. So we've actually got four layers, four main layers of our visual field. Where you put your hands first, that's your far peripheral vision, the very edge of your visual field. When you bring your hands in a little closer, you're in your middle peripheral vision. When you bring your hands a little closer, you're in your near peripheral vision, kind of like a circle. And then that comes all the way up and touches your central vision, which you're going to grab two colored, different colored pencils. The tip of one of the pencils is going to represent the size of your central vision. So if you look at one tip of one pencil, that is your central vision. And just look how small it is. The root cause of many vision problems is the loss of central fixation. Or the opposite of central fixation is called diffusion. Where you diffuse, you open up your area of focus to too large of an area. You're trying to see too much at once. It's anatomically impossible because all of your cones are packed into the center of your retina, this little tiny spot called the macula, 
which is about 0.15 millimeters, which is very, very small. When you try and spread out and see my whole face at once, or an entire eye chart at once, you are asking your rods to do the job of the cones, which is anatomically impossible. So they put up a fight. They're like, what do you do? Why are you telling me to do the job of the cones? And then that creates all this strain and blur, and we lose our vision. When we can learn to shrink our central vision down to a really, really tiny point, that's when we can see clearly without glasses. And this is why people can practice the Bates method for 20 years and not see clearly, because I'll ask them, how's your central fixation? What? What do you mean? They're, they're missing the most important element of how to see without glasses. Look what we're doing with our eyes these days. We're basically uh, looking at the phone all the time, looking at computers all the time. Don't give the eye the chance to look at a distance, which our ancestors used to do. Forget that we have periphery and forget to look at real minor details. We just do that and that's the formula for glaucoma, cataract, and macular degeneration. If we're using a computer or a phone or a tablet these days, more than two hours a day. Now that's not that long. If you think about how often you spend on a tablet, a phone, and a computer, more than two hours a day, then it has a detrimental effect on your eyesight. Thriving and surviving the technological age is ruining our eyesight. I mean, over 80% of children 12 and under in, in China and Japan are nearsighted now. I think it's by the year 2030 or 40, there's gonna be five billion people nearsighted. I did a Masters of Education in how computers can impact our eyes. When I wrote the final thesis, I found that there was three things that we can do to improve our physical eyesight at the computer. The first is to make sure that we blink, because we tend to have a tendency to stare at the computer, especially with spreadsheets and Word documents. The second one is to breathe and just relax a little bit while we're at the computer because again, we have a tendency to hold ourselves at the computer. And the third one is to make sure every now and then you simply look away, look at a window, a picture beside you, and then come back to the screen to allow our eyes adjust back to the screen itself. And I know of one ophthalmologist that a woman brought her 15 year old daughter and to fit glasses, she didn't see well. He said, how long is she in front of the computer? The woman said, the whole day. He said, let her go and play. And he wasn't unconventional. He just was an ophthalmologist with mm -hmm. some brain and intuition. So she went and played every half an hour. She came back in two months, there was no need for glasses. We often sit at the computer with our necks slightly bent and our eyes as a result are not level, they're actually over and it puts more strain on our eyesight. And the way we can check that is simply put our thumb out with a slightly bent arm and we look past our thumb. So look into the distance and just be aware of your thumb. And what it would look like is you'll see two thumbs because you're looking into the distance. And one thumb may look higher than the other. So, so you're tilting your ear from left to right. And as you do that, it appears as if your thumbs are going up and down. And the least amount of stress on your eyesight is if your eyes are level. And so tilt your head until you've got that level. And that puts the least amount of stress on your eyes while you're working on the computer. Maybe you can put, set your timer for every five minutes to look at 20 feet or more. And we're very resistant. It's really annoying, right? When we first do it, what do you mean I have to look in the distance every five minutes? And after a while, we get used to that. It's really important that the processes that we talk about that it becomes a daily activity for you. I've got a huge garden in the, in the valley, apple orchards and, and growing my own vegetables to, to get involved with their hands and, and to, to remember that we, our eyes are part of this incredible existence called nature. We just have to get back there. The sun is not your enemy. The sun is your best friend. And if you learn how to adapt to it in our methods, you actually would be able to see way, way better. It's really important to start your day with light. It not only is healthy for your eyes, but it sets your circadian rhythms. If you expose yourself to bright light first thing before you do anything in the morning, then you're guaranteeing an easier 
night's sleep that night, next night, and it, it compounds. I want to find a way to adapt to daylight, not to escape it. Out of the entire Bates method, the sunning is my absolute favorite. And even though my vision is normalized and I don't necessarily need to keep doing practices, I still sun my eyes every day. People know you get vitamin D through the skin, but you get so much more through eye exposure. Go outside without glasses. Many people are adverse to the sun. They're afraid of it or it hurts their eyes. Our eyes not only experience the world of sight, but our eyes are the only transparent biological windows of the body that allow light, which is nature's most perfect fuel mix, to enter the body and to literally energize every cell in the body. And because all of our physiology is inseparable from light, darkness, and all the changes that exist in between light and darkness. If you are light sensitive, you want to be really gentle with it. And we're not saying you're not allowed to wear sunglasses. If you want to wear, if you want some protection, if you know you're going to be out at the beach all day or skiing or whatever, just don't wear really dark tinted sunglasses because that's what weakens your iris muscles. When you have really dark glasses on and it's really bright out, your brain thinks, oh, it's like nighttime. So your pupils dilate and your pupils never get to constrict enough because you're never exposed to the brightness. So if you wear lightly tinted sunglasses or even like yellow tinted sunglasses, it, it cuts the glare, it gives you some of the UV protection, but it doesn't weaken your iris muscles. What I do is I actually lift my eyebrows up and keep my eyes down and you just always want to keep moving either side to side or up and down. I do sun sandwiches. So that's where I do 10 or 15 seconds of sunning, followed by 10 or 15 seconds of palming, and I just alternate really, really bright, really, really dark, back and forth, for anywhere between one minute and five minutes. I, I talk about four rules of sunning, always letting your comfort be your guide, so never you know, go overboard with it. Always balance the sunning with palming. Um, a little bit often is better than a whole bunch at once, so just taking little tiny doses throughout the day and then don't stare at the sun with your eyes open. While I doing um, making my, my food and, and, and uh, uh, I can uh, connect to the colors I see and breathe in with my eyes the colors I'm preparing the food or I'm eating the food. So what's the number one food for the eyes? Nope, it's not carrots, but kale. Kale is the highest degree of lutein, zeaxanthin, along with orange peppers. So I believe that we have to nourish our eyes through diet. The best foods, kale, orange peppers, blueberries, the dark grapes. As much as we can do multicolors in our foods, the best for our eyes. So one thing I'd like you to do is just to squeeze your eyes like that. Squeeze them really tight and then open them. And when you open them, become aware of the first thing that you see. Everything might pop up and you might actually get to see something and go, wow. And go for the hobbies, go for the passion of creativity, choose hobbies that are fun and activate the feeling nature. Because most eyesight difficulties is an overthinking, it's an overdoing, too fast, not taking enough time to really see. Not too much only stay in this thinking that because that's the past or creating a new future is not the, the moment. It's on the moment is sensing. Yoga teaching and vision education is very similar in that the belief systems are relaxation, flexibility, hydration, awareness, and just a greater sense of self, but mostly deep relaxation. And what does yoga mean? It means union going back to integrative medicine. I think he went around and tried to figure out what other cultures were doing. Because a lot of what the Bates Method is based on is a lot of yoga and yogic techniques and yogic thought. Before I learned about any of this vision stuff, I was a registered yoga instructor. So I love to explore the connection between yoga and the vision specifically including things like meditation and breath work and just healthier lifestyle in general that yoga has been teaching for thousands of years as well. So a hint I love to tell my students is to simply 
Close your eyes. Relax your eyes in their eye socket. Relax the cheekbones. Relax your jaw. Relax the back of your tongue, because if you can relax the back of your tongue, your whole body can relax. And in that state, just taking a breath, deeply relaxing, and gently breathing and blinking open really has the ability of resetting the nervous system and to allow the eyes to rest just for that split second. What I want people to do right now is just to yawn. Oh. And maybe seeing me yawn or hearing me yawn is contagious and it makes you yawn. Even if you don't yawn, you can fake it till you make it and just kind of go through the motions. Just take a big breath in oh. and make that sound, that sigh sound. And even if you don't yawn, maybe just doing a sigh, an audible sigh from high to low, like oh. one breath like this can actually make an instant change in your nervous system. What it's doing is actually calming down the vagus nerve, which is one of the biggest nerves in the body that connects to many of the major organs in the system. And a lot of people are kind of stuck in the fight, flight, or freeze sympathetic response in the autonomic nervous system. And when you take one deep breath or yawn or sigh, it starts to move you a little bit more into the rest, relax, digest, parasympathetic nervous system and that's what the Bates method teaches, right? Is how to relax and how to calm your nerves because all vision problems are nervous problems. And so anything you can do to calm your nerves is gonna help your eyes as well. Not to mention you're just getting a lot more oxygen and you may notice if you are yawning with me right now that you actually notice some tear production and eyes with a healthy tear film see better than dry eyes do. My journey began in 1992 when I was completely run over by a truck. And it went over my entire body, up my spine, over my head, and crushed my face in the rocks. The only thing that was not damaged was my left eye orbit. It was on limestone gravel. And so the, you know, the rocks were different sizes. And there was a big rock that crushed my orbit, but it protected my eyeball, you know, so I didn't go blind. I had, I've had over 30 reconstructive surgeries. I had a diagnosed moderate to severe brain injury and musculoskeletal, chronic pain. Uh, it's been quite a journey. They didn't know if I'd live or die and I was disabled completely for over 10 years. I was operated on for a pituitary tumor. I'm sitting on the optic nerve and they told me you shouldn't be able to see. And this became the next challenge for me to gain not only my eyesight back, but all of my vision. I've had a number of eye surgeries due to an eye disease and have necessitated um, really finding ways to make myself mentally, physically, and emotionally ready for surgeries, but also how to care for my eyes and my vision post-op because we're not always educated by our surgeons on post-operative care. They found out that my optic nerve was so damaged I was going blind. It was like living in a moving kaleidoscope all the time. And then on the fourth orbital reconstruction surgery I had, I nearly went blind again from this eye because the uh, exterior muscles were trapped in the orbital floor from previous surgeries. And they released them, but they didn't take care of my eye, and I developed a terrible corneal ulceration where I nearly went blind, plus my eye turned completely in. First of all, we should do anything we can do to resolve things naturally. And if we can't, to use uh, external uh, uh, invasive procedures, and then after we use them, return to nature and do anything that we can do naturally. It's really important to allow the eye a long time to heal. And personally, I don't begin real focused natural vision improvement techniques until about nine to 12 months post-op. I think the eyes and the visual system really need time to find a homeostasis. And then from there, you can begin to retrain and rebalance the visual system. Through nutrition, 
gentle massaging of the eyes and the forehead, relaxing all the trauma that we experience from surgeries can really help us heal on a gentle level without disrupting all the process that was just done. And the evidence from the ophthalmologist is that the healing is better. I read and write, you know, without glasses. I don't need reading, I don't need driving glasses, nothing on my, you know, I have no restrictions. I remember after the operation and during the recovery, I started for the first time to listen to visualization tapes to really start changing my mindset and start visualizing what was a better life and a better way of seeing for me. It's about being in the moment, being present. I am very grateful for everything I have learned in my journey. Oh, your child has a, a crossed eye. They're not quite old enough, but I'll do next year, I'll do a surgery. It's, it's malpractice as far as I'm concerned that they don't spend time trying to teach the eyes how to work together, how to fuse together before they do the surgery. Maybe they won't even have to do any surgery because the eye will straighten out. This girl, she was very easy to work with because of her age, being 10 years old. She's old enough to understand instructions, but also young enough that, you know, she'll just fly with it. I explained to her why her eye was moving out and how she could change that tension, the left eye muscle tension, and release it back. First by helping her control it by making the turn worse and then having it come back in. So as she made it worse, she could create more double vision, a bigger gap between the two images. And as she relaxed, the gap became smaller. And so she learned to play with it and learned she had some control. And then at some point I said, okay, now let your eyes just be open and blink. But as soon as things go double, I want you to close your eyes. Well, she opens her eyes and looks around and blinks and she says, everything is single. And she's happy and excited and I says, okay, now if it goes double, I want you to close your eyes. She says, okay. And she just keeps looking around and blinking and she was fine. And it didn't go back. It stayed fine. And so within one hour, she went from double vision and an eye that moved out to perfectly normal straight vision. And the surgery that was already half planned could be canceled. And I heard from them several months later and again several years later that it, she was fine, never needed the surgery. One of the things I found with Bates is he seemed to focus more about what was happening behind the eyes than necessarily what was happening in front of the eyes. Things like our mind, our memory, even our thoughts, and even our emotions, all then have an impact on how we physically see. When you got your glasses, what was going on in your life? And then they're like, I was in third grade, my parents divorced, or we moved, or something like that. So yeah, and I really, I didn't, I was scared. It shows that there was something going on. It wasn't just, suddenly you couldn't see the blackboard anymore. I came from the business world. I was working for a bank and I was trained in economics and so on. And I didn't know I could go deeper into my eyes. They were just there with my glasses on. And then she <laughs> opened me the door to this new world of health and, and, and well-being through the eyes. And it's so powerful that I, I couldn't think that through the eyes, so little part of the body, you know, but so important that through the eyes you could go and reach your whole being. That's amazing for me. It still is amazing. Yeah. How we see with our eyes is reflection of how we see life. When we're unhappy or when we're bored, we tend to, and I did it a lot as a kid, and I'd go like this. And my mind, though my eyes are just kind of not really looking at anything, and my mind has gone to Hawaii or somewhere, you know? Because I didn't want to be where I was, and it was a way of escaping. And it's often the smart kids who end up in the glasses. Yes, maybe they read a lot and no one tells them to change focus, but at the same time, it's also, I think, because they're bored and nothing much is happening in the class that's engaging them. I've had the experience where I've been feeling really good and suddenly my whole field of vision opened up. 
and I've had situations where I've come from a fear, or I feel like I'm being tested or what's going on, and my field of vision actually collapses. When you do eye exercises, sometimes you improve a lot and then you get stuck because emotions that you have in you have not been able to be cleared. And this is what's so beautiful about combining body work and eye exercises. Movement brings the emotions, movement takes them away. And the person has to be patient with the process that he or she are passing through. The eyes are a two-way street. We need to let the images come in, the light come in and receive. And we need to allow the emotions to be expressed. And the way I've been teaching is to see from the core. And the core in the human being is this energetic line through the body, right down the center, just like the core of the carrot is for the carrot. And when we can receive the images there, we don't strain. And it's the same with the feelings. The feelings just come out and the light comes in and it's an easy flow as long as we can stay connected to ourselves in the present. So when a person is nearsighted, we're not talking about their eyes. We're talking about their way of experiencing reality. We're talking about how they have compensated for perhaps going through a difficult period to make their world more comfortable, more workable. Um, the changes that we make that often cause us to wear glasses are not bad changes. We've just made them at a time when that's what we needed in order to support our sense of safety and security as we move through the world. And then the discovery that we can possibly reverse that or see life in a different way is something that occurs at a different level of life when we're ready for that. You have to make it work for yourself. If you just want the quick fix, like without going into your inner emotional area and really connecting with yourself and what you don't want to see, you know, you're only going to get so far. The interesting experience was when I felt clear, I saw clear. And from moment to moment it could shift. Simply by working on my eyes, giving attention to the eyes and experimenting different ways of using the eyes, I would come into a different state of consciousness. I would be more open to different sides of reality. Emotions are integral to our makeup. This is why the field of psycho, neuro, immuno, endocrinology exists, which essentially says that the beliefs, ideas, intentions that we identify with then reflect themselves in our immunological functions, our endocrinological functions, in our entire being, in our entire makeup. There's a real big connection between the emotional body and vision. So the more stress you're under, the more your peripheral visual field decreases. I believe that the eyes are not just for seeing, receiving light. I think they're also for expressing emotions. The eyes in my eyes <laughs> have two main purposes, to see and to cry. And when we cry, we're literally squeezing emotions out of our face through our tears. And there was a long period in my life where I did not cry. I suppressed a lot of emotions. And I believe that that's part of my root cause of my blurry vision that I had earlier in my life. And when I learned about natural vision improvement, I actually got more in touch with my emotions and I actually let them process through and I started crying more. And every time after a cry, my vision would be clearer. There was a release of emotions that I had been trapping in, and when I let them out, it had a positive effect on my vision. If you haven't had a good cry in a while, maybe it's time. My speciality is really looking at vision of life, not just looking at people's eyesight, but I'm interested in making the best out of each person in giving them the gifts and the talents and the strategies for moving forward in their lives. So I've done that through a process which I call life vision mentoring, which is really helping people to expand themselves and expand their own vision. 
my work is not just about identifying blocks, it's about clearing these blocks as well. So they refer to me as Australia's the blockbuster, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> the eye exercises help, they're there to support the process, but the miracle is in changing the way people see both their past and their future so that they're more firmly fixed in the here and now. Our senses are doors or, or uh, gates between the inner person and the outer world. And under really clear circumstances, there is a clear connection. Don't worry about the eyesight so much. Worry about how you're seeing life. You know, what is it in life that you're not seeing? And for some people, if it's about past issues, it could be quite negative. It could be these negative issues they've had and stresses they've had. I help them to see them in a different way so that they can move forward. The same with other people. They have a stress about their vision of the future. You know, can I live up to what I want to be? And I think I can achieve that, but I'm not achieving. Actually help those people not only get clarity on what that vision is, but actually take steps towards that. And in the process, the magic happens because their eyesight takes care of itself. I think the eye care industry is changing and it has to change. At the moment, there are things that you can get on the internet. You can get cheap glasses on the internet and you can get diagnosis with little devices that attach to a smartphone. So you can measure your own prescription, you can order your own glasses. And um, that's going to change the eye care industry. Lenses are going to take on a, a new meaning. It's not just correcting things like the blue light blockers, we're going to start using glasses that have a preventive approach, like SLR is now producing an ISN lens, Cooper and other companies are producing the retinal blur, peripheral blur lenses. Uh, they are in the right direction. My vision of eye care in the future is to have optometrists collaborating with vision educators, and we get the best of both worlds so that people wishing to be able to see can get reduced lenses, can get support through optometrists, and they can get the guidance of a vision educator so that they can take personal responsibility for themselves. My sense is that this humanistic approach could just fit into a little corner one day of an optometric office where maybe it's coaching that they provide as an extra service and have a therapist, trainer, vision educator there. And that would be a perfect mix. When you go to the eye doctor, or especially if you bring a child to the eye doctor, that they actually ask you about your life, your questions. What are you doing with your eyes? How's your sleep? How's your stress? Where are you on the emotional scale, right? And then offer you this as a first option before you do anything else, right? And only if that doesn't work, or if some people might be, you know what, I don't, I just want the quick fix. I don't want to go inside. I don't want to know this, fine, right? But have that as one of the, the first option and then use glasses, contacts, or surgery. The future of vision care should be eye health care. Eye, meaning not just the physical eye, but the totality of the person. You are the one in charge. You are the consumer. And that consumerism means you ask for what you want. If you don't want drops in your eyes, say so. If you don't want strong glasses, talk to them, inquire. And if they don't respond, find somebody that will. There are vision therapy optometrists, behavioral optometrists, developmental optometrists who are very receptive to myopia control, very open to vision therapy principles, part of what we do in vision education. So there's a symbiotic potential that's available, uh, but it's the consumer, the people like you and I, that have to go out and ask for it. Well, the really cool thing is that we see with the mind and we can change our mind and we do it all the time. So let's change it about vision. Real change, whether it's in chemistry, physics, or biology, or relationships, or even getting your clothing clean, requires agitation. We say it all comes out in the wash. It all becomes clear and clean. 
interestingly enough, all this is happening in 2020, the year of clarity, the year of I see, which means I understand. And so the pandemic changes our awareness of the racial inequalities of the world, our awareness of the difference between leaders who lead and leaders that demand, all of that could never have become clearer than it is becoming right now. So while this is a time of disturbance, this is our moment of greatness. We've already demonstrated, yes, we can do stuff by ourselves. The benefits of going to a vision educator, to me, just speeds up the process, number one. But it also makes it safe to do, like it makes it a safe process. Because I know I was quite scared about doing some of this stuff. I was like, is this okay or is this not okay? You know, I was told by an optometrist, make sure you wear your glasses all the time or your eyes will get worse. Mm -hmm. And so when I started taking them off, there was some guilt that sort of came in, or am I doing the right thing with my eyes, or is this okay? And, and I found that by working with people and giving them that reassurance that things are okay, it sort of speeds up the process, but it also enables them to go within quicker for themselves. It's difficult to see yourself from the outside. So a vision teacher can give you uh, feedback of how you put your hair, how you breathe, if you bling or not. The teacher's job is to find what really works to help that student relax, because not everything does it. I mean, you, you, you give them all the relaxation drills and palming and so forth. Some people palm and that's like, wow, it's magic. Others palm and it's not magic. The amount of people that can benefit from this and the amount of people that we can help through this. The stories that we've heard and the, the case histories of people that they've shared with us are just so inspiring and that's really what originally fueled me. Maybe by going through watching this, it has already begun to shift or change your perception of vision or your belief about what's possible. Without even doing any practices, you might actually already start to see some change or improvement. Go and Google, see what you can find, and take some first steps for yourself to finding out what you can do about your own eyesight. If you change your vision, you absolutely will change your life. space between objects. By like looking at a tree, particularly the pine trees, rather than seeing the pine trees a blur, I see the light between the leaves, I see the light between the branches. I was able to pass my driver's test this year without lenses. The human body is just wonderfully made, and if you're willing to work with it, like using the Bates method, it's amazing to discover its capabilities. I was enthralled, and I had someone immediately take me to the optometrist remaining in a relaxed state, continuing to relax my vision. And immediately, uh, the optometrist tested me and my prescription had dropped two points that day. It has greatly improved my color vision, imagination, and my ability to think clearly. My left eye was 5.75, has improved to a trainer glass of one in myopia. I have enhanced color perception and depth perception, enhanced peripheral vision, I see in a whole new way now. I see details I never saw before, even before I needed glasses. And now I get to put those details in my paintings. You know, don't believe me, believe yourself. You know, try things out, see what works for you, see what resonates. Being able to see when I close my eyes, the details of the room that I'm in. That was a new feat for me to do. Because I'm absolutely determined not to wear glasses in my life. But I don't want it to be a fight. I want to relax into that. And I think with Barry's exercises, they're a relaxing process. They're not a fighting process. This has been an amazing journey. And I can't wait to do more.
Voila! Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much, uh, Nathan Oxenfeld, Barry Ockerdell, for uh, providing the world with this amazing documentary uh, that you put so much work into, um, and the, and for your generosity to let us um, watch it also in the community of the ClearSight method. Um, I would like to say, well, uh, I hope that Nathan is still around here, if you are, uh, it's lovely, um, and uh, if you have questions, uh, it will be between me and I that uh, can answer them. But if, before we go there, um, I would like to ask you, what have you got from the film? What do you stay with? Did you notice a particular practice that you like, a particular exercise, or an idea, or um, a, a story from someone, a testimonial, a transformation? Uh, it would be nice uh, to see what you have uh, learned from it or what you have taken from it. I see Carly saying that was very interesting and enlightening. Um, so this, I think it is 17 vision educators, um, that um, vision teachers, vision coaches that Nathan and Barry uh, interviewed uh, for the documentary are all amazing. And there's many more of them also around the world. And uh, that's one of the options uh, to improve your eyesight naturally, to go see somebody and work one-on-one -on -one with them. Yes, uh, they have also written a number of books. I have here a number of books by the, uh, by the people who have in been interviewed, but there's of course many more books on natural vision improvement by many other people besides them. Yeah. Uh, so reading books on the topic will also, of course, enlighten you, and that will give you plenty of good ideas on what to do, what not to do, yeah, to take care of your eyes and improve your eyesight naturally. This is a great book. It's, uh, yeah, uh, by Esther van der Werf. Uh, she has another one. And the book by Nathan Oxenfeld, one of the creators, also a great book. So uh, all of these tools and uh, ways to improve your eyesight are very, very valid. I know that Barry Ockertel and Nathan Oxenfeld themselves also have uh, programs to improve their eyesight naturally online. Uh, Claudia Mulevech does too. Um, and uh, if you want to purchase the, um, <clears throat> the documentary or to rent it, uh, to see it beyond this weekend where we can show it for free in this YouTube channel, uh, you can visit um, the page vision2020movie.com. Now, there's another possibility that you have, and that is to participate in the free four-part masterclass that we're going to be sharing um, this uh, starting this Wednesday. Uh -huh. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a more in-depth presentation about um, this um, about this four-part uh, free masterclass wake up your eyes uh, and you can uh, register um, with your email and your name uh, and the first class will be uh, on Wednesday. And now let me check uh, what's happening in the in the what's happening in the uh, comments. Okay, so Carol was saying very interesting and enlightening. Soraya, very inspiring too. Linda, for me, it was very enlightening. I have your eyesight improvement course, but haven't really started yet. Well, the good news is that you have access to the program forever, uh -huh, so you didn't miss anything. But it's a pity that you have already purchased it, that you did the investment, and that you're not taking advantage of it. Uh, so in that case, Linda, let me invite you to participate in the free four-part masterclass so that you get like a, st a startup uh, at so that you can jumpstart with it and then to, to continue with the next group that's going to do it. Well, Kelly saying the connection between relaxation and sight was super interesting for me. Absolutely, Dr. William Bates was the first to establish this connection uh, together with Emily Bates, Emily Learman Bates. Um, and uh, there's been a lot of research also about the impact on emotions on eyesight that have been developing from the 50s onward. And I've had the opportunity to be part of uh, those researchers talking about it. Um, Jul Julaine, it was so good to see to see it again. Got more out of it. Absolutely, this documentary is well, like one of those very good books or very good films that every time you watch it, you get new layers of meaning and understanding. So yes, I'm very very happy um, that Nathan Oxenfeld and Barry Ockertel allow me to show it for the community about once a year. 
Uh, Carol, I have to concentrate on getting out in the sun more, even in this Minnesota cold weather that lasts forever. Yes, absolutely. Um, sunning is also one of my favorites. I see that Nathan is also saying that. Uh, sunning is so good, not only for your eyesight and to get vitamin D and to make your retinas be healthier because the, um, yeah, the sun it stimulates the mitochondria and that gives more energy to the eyes. But when you're in the sun with the direct uh, natural sunlight at whatever time of the day, that regulates your nervous system and that regulates your endocrine system. So it's really, really good. And if you live in cold weather, of course, the best is always to do um, sunning outdoors and without any glasses interfering between the sun and your eyes your eyes closed towards the sun, like they showed in the documentary. Uh, but if for some reason you cannot be outside because it's so, so, so cold, um, then uh, if there's a window at home where the sun comes in, at least do the sunning um, across the window of your home. Of course, it would be better without the glass, but it's better to do the sunning from home between, behind the window than not to do it at all. Yeah. Uh, okay. I see Sherry saying super yoga helps too. Absolutely. Any strategy that helps you relax and be present, be it yoga, be it Alexander Technique or Feldenkrais or Utonia or um, Pilates or some body practice that encourages movement, relaxation, presence is going to be helpful. Um, and you enjoy nature. Yes. And details. Um, okay, and your glasses are still in a drawer since my fantastic class is so happy about it. So, so happy. That's uh, why uh, we do this, so that people like you and me can improve their eyesight naturally. And you have seen in the documentary that uh, years and years after people have gone through this kind of training and this kind of rehab for the eyes, uh, they just keep having good eyesight. Okay, we already saw this. So Rick, he's saying, I love this exercise. Reduce my area of central fixation to the tiny field, like the tip of a pen. Absolutely. This way you're actually taking advantage of um, the natural anatomy of the eye. We could show it here, but I also have this, uh, little, um, um, this little model. Yeah, here it is, the fovea. This is a right eye, actually. Yeah, with the optic nerve going a little bit inside. And what's directly behind the pupil is the fovea. This little, little, very little space, yes, um, that's uh, like the tip of the pen. And that's the pixel of highest quality in your eyesight. So just pay attention to the details that you see and don't try to see everything else as sharp because it's just an, um, anatomically not possible. And the more we train in natural vision, well, the better we see. Okay. And also, Rick, I love this. Uh, also, Rick, uh, relax the eyes, the jaw, and the back of the tongue. Absolutely. Oh, it's Lexi. Lexi is uh, one of the participants in the ClearSight method. Hello, Lexi. It's nice to see you. And also, it's good to have your tongue touching just behind your teeth. Mm -hmm. Usually, that creates a state of relaxation. Uh, for your tongue, and the tongue is directly connected with the vagus nerve that uh, Nathan was talking about earlier too. So having the tongue relaxed creates uh, uh, relaxation for the whole body, yeah? So Halle, Lion, Maine, I love reframing to think about going deeper into your eyes. Absolutely, that's a very good idea. And people being uh, happy and thanking. Um, Alison, nice to see you, to learn what an integral role our eyes play in our bodies and holistic health. So that was your main takeaway. Great, great idea. And Polly, so pleased to watch that. I'm 59 years old and have myopia. I think that I need to know how to centrally fixate. Yes, absolutely. How to pay attention to details. Uh, that's uh, like the everyday language uh, to put that into practice. Just pay attention at the little detail that's interesting you just in front of your eyes and keep moving the eyes to look for more details. Uh -huh. And in that way, your memory can remember all the details that it saw. And it's actually our mind that reconstructs a clear picture that is bigger than just the details, yeah? Um, and uh, at 59 and later, 
Uh, yes, Nathan says you're 59 years young. Yes, Polly. And uh, at any age, you can improve your eyesight. Um, Nathan, Barry, all the people in the documentary and I have had people of all ages improving their eyesight. <clears throat> So, Georg is saying, wow, I must examine my own deep, deeper emotions, what I'm not willing to acknowledge in my life. Um, Georg, there's a tip for this, and this is something that I have uh, personally worked on for many years. Um, you can remember when the symptom was diagnosed or when you noticed that it started. And when you find that moment, you can ask yourself three questions. So, when it happened, what year it was, or how old you were, or what period of the year, uh -huh, so you can locate it in time. Second, what was going on in your life at that time? Mm -hmm. And third, what does this symptom allow you to do or keep you from doing? And when you answer to those three questions, many, many times, the metaphor or the meaning or the function the symptom was playing becomes visible and once you acknowledge that, you have the possibility to integrate that and find a solution at a higher level where the symptom doesn't need to be there. And we're going to talk about this specifically in lesson number three uh, of um, the Wake Up Your Eyes Free four-part masterclass. Um, so because there were people asking about it earlier, I'm going to remind the dates. I'm going to uh, show them there. Maybe not this big, just like this. It's this. There you go. This one. Um, so uh, we will talk about emotions, particularly in lesson three between April 9th and April 11th. But I encourage you to participate in the whole free four part masterclass because you're going to learn plenty of exercises, practices, uh, more ideas that are helpful. And you'll be able to go more in depth about all these processes. And a lot of people improve their eyesight greatly during this uh, couple of weeks that the four part free masterclass takes place. Um, let's see. Halle is saying, thank you so much. There's always so much more to learn. And if I'm not mistaken, Halle is also a participant of the Clear Sight Method. Uh, also, I think uh, this was Lexi saying, very, very good movie. Thank you. After I know as class, I need many, many reminders of the practices during the day. Well, one uh, strategy is um, to put post-its uh, in different places. It could be around the frame of your computer, but in different places of your home, you could uh, put post-its to remind you to breathe and blink and look far away uh -huh, and um, all these things. Uh, and I see Nathan is talking here. So glad you're feeling the connection between emotions and vision. That's why we chose the subtitles from eyesight to insight. That was so genius, Nathan. And I was so happy that you, um, uh, you and the vision educators you interviewed really uh, went into that topic because a lot of people are not aware of it. And it's actually, uh, for me, one of those 80-20 rules, the Pareto principles that with just a little bit of work on the emotional aspect, you get 80% of improvement. So, and also, more than 80% of eyesight symptoms in the research I have personally done coincide with a um, moment in life where people were under stress and having to handle difficult emotions. So um, it's really an important dimension. Okay, Sylvia is saying, actually, we see with the mind influenced by emotions and we can change them. We can improve our eyesight too. It's great hope and reality for everyone indeed. Uh, Sylvia, uh, is one of our students of the um, a degree of uh, vision coaching. Uh, so I'm very happy that you're around. Okay, and Sheena discovered that the eyes are part of the brain. Absolutely, they're considered part of the brain. Retina, the retina is nervous tissue. And um, yeah, so we need also, we can also train our brain to see better. That's something that we can learn to do. And actually, Chris is saying through Ainoa's program, I learned to change. Um, I learned I have to change my lifestyle. Absolutely. Good habits and good lifestyle yield to good health and good eyesight. And the benefits are multiple, not just uh, seeing better. Um, so if you want to discover more about it, um, I'd like to invite you to join this three, four part masterclass. Okay, and Kelly is, I'm so hopeful about improving my vision even at age 62. It's absolutely possible. 
Uh, again, uh, we have people over 80 and 90 who improve their eyesight. So at 62 years young, it's absolutely uh, possible. Alison is asking for um, the Vision 2020 movie. Uh, so this is it, to rent or buy the documentary. You can visit vision2020movie.com. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there, there a little bit. Um, and so there's people from Vermont. So uh, maybe Nathan and, and you can meet uh, because uh, he's living in Vermont now. <clears throat> Okay, and Sheena is asking, how do I get started with the lessons? It was an amazing documentary and made perfect sense for me and for my son also. So I'm going to post again the link where um, you can uh, sign up for the free four-part masterclass. Yeah, it's clearsightmethod.com slash wake up your eyes. And tomorrow I'm going to do a more in-depth presentation on what's going to happen in this free four-part masterclass and how to prepare for it. And we will start on Wednesday. <coughs> okay, I need to drink a little bit of water myself. Um, let's see, Michael Reynolds. Yes, uh, so nice to see you, Michael, another of our students. Very happy to watch the documentary again. Mm. And Michelle is also talking about, like an aha moment, the fact that an incident was the time when glasses became necessary. Well, this is what lesson three is going to be all about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we'll explore that even further. And Michelle also, I know I've hidden behind my glasses since I started wearing them in grade eight. The same, um, wow, the same fall my mom murdered my two birds. Oh my God, my best friends. I'm shocked yet not surprised. Thank you so much for this. I'm sorry that you had to do this um, this um, grieving for your birds and also how hard it must have been that your own mom was the one who, who killed them. Um, so I understand that there must have been emotions wrapped up in that myopia and the need to protect yourself that appeared at that time. And again, we're going to talk about these dynamics in lesson number three of um, the Wake Up Your Eyes free master, four-part masterclass. There will be a lot more information, of course, but the emotional aspect is also one of my specialties. And I'm so happy that you and Nathan are going to meet in Vermont. Yay. Okay, Soraya, after two years of not driving at night because of fear, I started driving at night again. I have improved astigmatism, myopia, and presbyopia, and hope to get rid of Starbucks. I'm very happy for you that you have improved that much. It's absolutely possible. Thank you for sharing. That gives um, that gives people uh, the hope through the proof that you have done it. Oh, and SWA says, I know you're a beautiful person and a master educator. Thank you so much. I appreciate you giving us all this knowledge in such a kind and inspiring way. Thank you very much. And I want to make this extensive to... Uh, all the, the colleagues, the uh, vision educators, vision teachers, vision coaches that I know tend to be really kind and generous people. So thank you for those words for me, but um, uh, you've seen the generosity also of Nathan Oxenfeld, Barry Ockertel, and all the people that are, have been interviewed. So uh, you're in good hands when you uh, take these workshops, go uh, to work one-on-one on one with them, uh, read the books or take the, <laughs> Uh, visit the podcast, learn the information. You're really, really in good hands. And Soraya is saying that um, now you wear no glasses. Congratulations. Okay, Andrew is asking about what time is the live video tomorrow? Okay, so um, this is the, the times of the free four-part video course. Mm -hmm. uh, dates, I mean, it, we will start on Wednesday, April 3rd. Each lesson has a video and a live. So lesson one, the video is on April 3rd and the live on April 5th. Uh, lesson two, the video is on April 6th and the live on April 8th. Then lesson three, the video again in April 9th and the live on April 11th. Yeah, and lesson four, um, the video is in April, um, on April 12th, and the live will happen on April 14th. So to participate in all of this, um, you want to make sure um, to register. I I'm showing the link again, so you can do it. <clears throat> I'm sharing it uh, in the chat. 
Um, now, the videos are pre-recorded, so they're going to be sent to you via email and you can watch them whenever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the standard is that they are sent at 9 a.m. in the morning, so you have all day, the following days, to watch them. The lives uh, happen at a specific time. It will be 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Central, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh -huh, and, uh, um, well, here are other schedules. Uh, 6 p.m. London, Dublin, Lisbon, or 7 p.m. Amsterdam, Berlin, Paris, Rome, Madrid, for those who are in Europe. Now, the lives also will be recorded and they will, be, they will stay um, on YouTube and Facebook to be watched the following days as well. However, I encourage you to come and participate live if you can, because your own engagement is going to be greater and your understanding will be greater, the involvement with the uh, materials will be greater, and you will have the opportunity to ask questions and um, receive answers, like now. Yeah, um, so Kelly's asking, the videos are available before the live presentations? Absolutely. So the videos are available a couple days before the live. And you're asking also if the videos have different content to the preceding vi videos. So, the thing is going to be like this. In the video, we're going to cover a certain topic. Mm -hmm. We will give the main ideas. They're about half an hour, um, half an hour long. And we will share a practice. We will share a tool, a technique, an exercise. So you will have a couple of days to practice with it. And then in the live, we will answer to questions about those techniques. Um, and we will also go deeper into the topics, we will share more exercises, more practices, we'll show you uh, uh, stories of people who have improved, um, and um, okay, so we'll go deeper, we'll show more exercises, you'll have testimonials, and we will have Q&A. Voila, so um, it's uh, very useful to do the two parts. In, uh, in our experience, it is what works best. Yeah, and SWA is saying, yes, all the people in the movie are also amazing and wonderful for their gift to humanity. Absolutely. And going back, uh, uh -huh, and Kelly is like, I can't wait. Well, welcome already. You, What you need to do is to uh, register through the link that I have provided. Let me share it again. And you'll get all the information. And uh, Andrew was asking, uh, actually, about the live tomorrow. Actually, the live tomorrow that is not on this table because it's the presentation is also, um, wait a second, I'm, I may actually have to update this um, because I think we're starting a bit later in this case. Anyway, you'll receive the proper information about the schedules, about the times by email. But in any case, tomorrow's presentation is going to happen at uh, yeah at the time uh, that I was showing. So tomorrow's presentation will be available and live on YouTube at 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, 12 noon Central, 1 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. London, and 7 p.m. Amsterdam. What might change is actually the times for the lives of the uh, free four-part masterclass, but uh, we'll update this very soon and we'll keep you posted. Tomorrow, this is the correct uh, times and dates. Okay, um, yes, Kelly is saying, I registered earlier this week, so happy for you, great. And uh, I'm not seeing more questions in the chat. Um, just I want to um, invite you to participate and to see with your own eyes how you can improve your eyesight um, and see clearly again with your own eyes naturally. Uh, with this free four-part masterclass, you're going to receive a lot of information. I, uh, there's been over 4,080,000 people all over the world participating in this four free four-part uh, four masterclass over the years uh, in all the countries in the world except for North Korea where they don't have Facebook and they have lots of restrictions of access. Um, to the internet, and a lot of people report that just with the free, uh, with the free masterclass, they improve their eyesight so much that they don't need to wear glasses anymore. And for those who would want to have uh, more help, more guidance, more time, more in-depth information, the support of a community, etc., uh, when we reach lesson number four, 
huh? we will uh, give you the opportunity after April the 12th to join a more in-depth program, uh, an advanced program, and that one, uh, well, it's a paid program, yeah? Um, but uh, you can take advantage of a lot of information for free, maybe solve your issues already for free. If you do so, I will be very, very happy. And if you need more help and want to join the advanced program, well, my team, the vision educators and coaches that I'm training, and I will be delighted to help you further through the advanced um, paid program. Okay, so um, uh, there's uh, questions about if we can't attend live, will there be recordings? Yes, there will be. Uh, the videos are pre-recorded, so you can watch them anytime. The lives will happen at a certain time, but the recording will remain uh, in YouTube and Facebook. So this is a reason why I also like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash method to make sure that you get all the warnings, yes. And also you can follow us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash method if you want to make sure that you access to the recordings. So will tomorrow be recorded also? Yes, it will. I know it's Easter and a lot will be with their families, absolutely. Um, but it's going to be recorded. So you will have it there. You can uh, watch it after you've had your time with family. Yeah, I myself will also spend time with my family. Uh, however, because we're in different time zones all over the world, it's uh, difficult to make it work for everybody at once. Uh, so we will do it live and uh, then the recording will be there so you can watch it. So um, there goes my invitation. Uh, you have seen so many, so much useful in-depth information in this documentary and so many examples and cases of people improving their eyesight. Uh -huh, naturally, um, you have the opportunity to do this for yourself. Uh, all you have to do is, uh, for now, during this free four-part masterclass, wake up your eyes in the link. Um, you can watch it live or record it, depending on your schedules. And in the next couple of weeks, I'll be guiding you and helping you to improve your eyesight naturally with these techniques. So um, this is it for today. And uh, since indeed it's Easter weekend, yes. So let me um, invite you to take care, be happy, enjoy the beauty of life. And uh, certainly we'll be seeing each other soon and better. And again, Nathan and uh, Nathan Oxenfeld and Barry Oppertel, thank you so much for having um, given us the opportunity to broadcast this documentary once more. So. Everyone have a great rest of your Saturday and we'll be seeing each other very soon. Bye bye.